Okay, here we are with my Browning 300 Winchester short mag barrel. It's a 22 inch barrel with four lands in it. Uh, <clears throat> when I purchased it, I never could get the thing to shoot straight. Uh, I tried many different loads, uh, many different bullets, different powders, different speeds, and it just seemed to always throw bullets. Uh, I never really could figure out why. I started to do some research on the internet and found out about how important the crown on the barrel was. And so I started doing a little investigating. In fact, I even bought a Hawkeye bore scope and actually investigated the bore and found out that this barrel wasn't manufactured very well. Uh, I've heard that what I'm about to show you can happen with cleaning rods, but uh, I did use a cleaning rod through the crown of the barrel. Uh, like I said, I only got about 100, maybe 120 rounds through it. I shot a box of factory ammo through it too, just to see what that would do. I uh, pretty much got the same results. Uh, the tightest groups I've gotten so far were about three to four inch groups with uh, Barnes 168 grain bullets. And uh, that's certainly not close enough. Um, that's out of a lead sled. And uh, another thing I found out about this barrel, which was kind of unusual, is that it was a four land barrel. Uh, it has four lands in it. Um, and when I started to use the Hawkeye bore scope and look at it, I found something out that was pretty interesting. Not only was the crown cut uneven, but uh, there's kind of a divot in the end of the barrel. And you'll see as I uh, put the dial indicator in the barrel, uh, this dial indicator has about an inch and a half stem on it, and, and it's pretty telling. If I take the dial indicator and put it in the barrel about as far as I can, and then start turning the chuck, you'll see that I fall to just about zero between every land. Uh, I got the barrel chucked up pretty close. It might be off a half thousandths or so, but uh, I'm just trying to checking things out right now. And you can see where the, the needle lands just shy of zero with the needle of the dial indicator in as far as I can get it in there. So what I'll do is I'll move the dial indicator out uh, nearly to the tip of the barrel and turn it and you'll see that I land just a little bit less than zero now between the lands except for one right here and you'll see I drop down uh, about a thousandths and a half and there just went over land went over another land went over another land and now here it'll drop down about a thousandths and a half and I actually have to turn or put the dial indicator in about a half inch or so before uh, I'll get past that bad spot. It's almost like the tooling they used to cut the lands in goofed at the end of the barrel. Let's see how perfect everything is here again. I'm just coming short of zero. Uh, the only repair obviously for this is going to be for me to cut off about three quarters of an inch of the barrel. Uh, I'll put a cutoff tool on the leg, cut the barrel off, uh, and then recrown the end. I'll put a target crown back on it and take it out and shoot it again to see uh, how well it shoots. So that's it for this. Okay, here we are. Uh, I still have the barrel chucked up in the lay. I haven't moved it since the previous videos where I showed you the crown, but uh, I'll give you a little idea of what I did here. Uh, the plan is to cut the end of the barrel off about three quarters of an inch and then uh, recrown it. So in the back on this grizzly leg, I call it the gunsmith leg because it has these dogs in the back and you can kind of level the other end of the material. But uh, the back end of the, uh, the barrel I have dial indicated pretty darn close. Uh, I feel it's close enough for when I'm going to be doing uh, crowning the barrel at the other end. After all, uh, what's important is that 
the other end of the barrel internally is uh, straight and not so much that this end is dial indicated correctly. However, I found that this end, having this end dial indicated pretty good, did end up being pretty straight with the other end. Uh, I left the receiver on because I didn't feel any need to break the receiver loose from the barrel. I don't really have a barrel wrench or anything, but uh, it seemed pretty well balanced. Uh, I'm not going to spin the barrel that fast anyway. And uh, at this end, I wanted to use a four jaw chuck so I could chuck the barrel up as accurately as possible. However, the four jaw chuck, the chucks, or the jaws, actually come out too far and it doesn't leave me any barrel left to work with because I want to chop off about three quarters of an inch here to get to the good lands and uh, recrown. Uh, what I have done was taking some paper to kind of dial indicate the barrel in. Paper works pretty good but it's limited. Uh, the paper is about two thousandths inch thick and if you really want to get close you've got to come up with uh, something thinner than paper almost like something like cellophane. But it happened to work out pretty well uh, with the paper and uh, kind of protects the barrels from the jaws too. Uh, also, uh, since I'm just crowning the barrel, uh, I felt that I had it indicated in fairly well. Uh, let's see if I can get you a little bit clearer on the dial indicator here. There, there you can see the dial indicator fairly well. It's tough not to have a blur or a glare on that. Mm -hmm. well. Frustrating. Yeah, we're going to have to call that good. So anyway, uh, internally the barrel is pretty darn close. You'll see I snap back to zero between the lands uh, every time, except for one spot. Uh, like I said, this barrel <laughs> isn't machined very well. There's a lot of uh, machining marks in it. Uh, I was pretty upset with the way the lands looked in the chamber. Uh, they were uneven too. It looks like when you put the cutter in there, uh, two of the lands start immediately and the other two lands start uh, after maybe 10 20 thousandths of an inch. Uh, there's no way the bullet can possibly start straight in this barrel. I'm really disappointed in Browning's barrel. But anyway, I think that's close enough for crowning the barrel. This dial indicator, each increment is uh, a thousandths of an inch. You'll see that when it bumps close to the five, uh, it's, the lands are about four thousandths high in this barrel. Give you an idea of what you're seeing on the dial indicator. Uh, I'm going to pull the dial indicator out about halfway. There's still good lands there. So, I think a pretty good spot to get about there to cut it. And the closer I get to the end, uh, farther off I get. So, I'm going to come out here a little bit further. That's what's really bad. You can really see the divot in there, right there. So, between the land, between the land, between the land, between the land and then between the land and then the divot. So anyway, I'm going to try to cut that out and so here we go. I think that's pretty close, or at least for recrowding. We're going to call that good and I'm going to cut the barrel and uh, recrown. Okay, I said I wasn't going to rechuck this but I did do a little bit of adjustment and uh, I got a little bit closer. Uh, you'll see if I go all the way in to the barrel 
uh, the dial indicator needles all the way in, you'll see I'm coming right back to zero there between the lands. Uh, it's about as close as I can get in a three jaw chuck. I shimmy things around with a few sheets of paper and and tighten the chuck in a little bit different sequence. It, it lands a little different every time you tighten a three jaw chuck, but I got it pretty close. And uh, anyway, you've seen the results there coming out to the tip of the barrel where the bad spot is. You'll see right there is where the bad spot is coming back between the lands. I'm coming at about minus one thousandths, minus one thousandths there, minus about three thousandths, and the next one minus about a thousandths and a half. So even that one has <clears throat> a little bit of a divot in it. But in order to get past the bad spot, which is right there, I have to go in about 40 thousandths. I already checked this, but we'll go in, you'll see as I go in here, I'm coming close to zero. So right, looking at my DRO right now, right there is 400 thousandths. I think I said 40 thousandths earlier, but it's 400 thousandths. So right there, I'm coming back to zero. We're pretty close, at least within two ten thousandths every time. And I think I'm going to call that good. I think that's where I'm going to cut the barrel. I'm actually going to cut it at 300 thousandths and leave myself about 100 thousandths to face and clean. And then I'll cut back in on the target crown and clean that up. That, sh that should bring me back to about 400 or 420 thousandths or thereabouts. And that should clean this up really well and get me right back to where I should be. So, next uh, video I'll be cutting. Okay, I found, the auto, or I found the manual focus on the camera and try to get you a really good video here of how uneven the crowd is on this rifle. And you can see that it kind of weaves in and out. I'll try to get a few different angles here. That's a pretty good one there. to see it weaving back and forth. And they just did a really poor job of machining it. I don't really know how that happened when they machined the rifle or what would cause that in the process of them manufacturing it other than just being sloppy, I don't know. I'll uh, get one more angle here and see if uh, that shows up differently. So maybe a little out of focus now. Hopefully that shows up well on camera. But that's one of the reasons that this this barrel has to also be cut off and re -crowned. Well, that's it for now.